Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. We are firing up on a Wednesday morning, and looks like a beautiful day. Man, we've been blessed with a beautiful week this week for weather. Uh, this is this is the kind of fall that I like, right? So join us this morning. We're going to get into the Word. We're going to dig deep here into John 13. We're going to look at a, a narrative toward the end of Jesus' ministry, something really powerful where Jesus has a test for his disciples, and we're going to see what that is. So good morning. Let us know how you're doing this morning. Hey, share this video if you think of it. It's one way that we can share hope, right? We can share our devotions and, and share getting into the Word. Good morning, good morning. Um, it's been cool to see how some of you have already taken this hope campaign into your hands and and done cool stuff for people, right? We talked about what our, our youth group did last week and tonight our youth group will be hiking to the top of Rib Mountain where we'll, we'll do a little worship and then we'll spread out and learn how we can have quiet time with God. So I'm excited to, to do that and maybe for some people who are enjoying the weather up there to, to see some hope of some people who are worshiping Jesus up there. So good morning, good morning. We're gonna look at John 13 today. So if you wanna open up and follow along, I'm in the ESV version, John 13. And uh, this is a pretty awesome narrative. So we're just gonna jump right into this. We're gonna get after this and see what Jesus has to teach his disciples and see what Jesus has to teach us about something that, that's so important, so fundamental to what it means to be a Christian. Okay, it really is. So here we go. Um, chapter 13, verse 1 of the book of John. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Okay, and what we're going to see here is, I, I talked about how some people, it's cool to see some people getting it with this hope series already, and they're bringing hope to people in cool ways. Here's a story where the disciples do not get it. Okay, they just do not get it at all. And Jesus drills the point home a number of times to them. They just don't get it. So here's what's happened. John 13, 1, this is going to be the, the upper room. Okay, this is the Last Supper. A lot of things happen at the Last Supper. And Jesus has sent scouts into the city because things are tense. He knows people want him dead. And these scouts are told to look for a man and water. And they, they, they find him. And they follow this man and they ask, are, are things ready for the master? Are things prepared for the master? They want to know if the upper room is ready. And that's where he takes them. And so Jesus and his disciples, they go to this upper room where, ironically, right, it's an upper room for safety because of how things are going for Jesus. But it's really going to be where he's betrayed, where, Jesus, where Judas is going to leave and betray him. So they go to this place for safety and Judas is going to betray him, all right? Of course, Jesus knows this is going to happen. Here we go, verse 2 and 3. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God. So, there, something's happened here, okay? And this text doesn't talk about it, but we know that there have been, in, in this entry into the upper room, the disciples have gone in, okay? And, and Jesus is sitting there, and he's watching people walk in, and he's wondering, are they going to pass the test? He watches disciple after disciple walk in, look at the door, stop, hesitate, uh, notice something, but then see the table filling up, and then rush to get a spot at the table. And Jesus is sitting there wondering, is anyone going to pass the test? Is anyone going to pass the test. Okay, so let, let's read on verse 4 and 5. What is that test? Jesus rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was wrapped around him. So, a house large enough to have a room to host 13 people would undoubtedly have someone there to wash your feet, okay? Think about it, okay? You've traveled in open-toed shoes all day long in Jerusalem during this week of the Passover. 
where there's more people there than ever. Okay, so sheep would have been brought to the temple and sheep leave a mess, okay? Camels, horses have been brought up with everyone to Jerusalem. Human waste is just thrown out into the streets. Your feet are full of you know what. And it's gotta be cleaned off. Okay, you don't just track that into someone's home. But in this case, there's, there's nobody there. There's no servant boy there. He's been pulled from his post. Maybe because they wanted absolute secrecy, but there's no servant boy and everybody's rushed in. So the guy who's supposed to be there to bend his knee and clean all that stuff from between your toes, he's not. So what does Jesus do? Right, Jesus gets ready to wash his disciples' feet. And he had been waiting, right, as they walked in, seeing that abandoned post, seeing the empty basin and the towel. Is someone going to pick up the towel? So, earlier in, in Jesus' ministry, the disciples had been arguing about who is the greatest. Who is the greatest? And Jesus said, if you want to be great, you, you want to follow me, you got to serve people like this, like washing feet. And, and, and the disciples are going to be like, what? What? They just don't get it. Okay, look at uh, verses 4 through 7. Jesus rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist, and he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Okay. He says, Peter, I know you've walked with me three years. You don't get it yet, but, but someday you will. Verse 8. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. And so Simon Peter said to him, Lord, do not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And, and Jesus is like, Oh boy, you, you don't get any of this yet, do you? <laughs> you don't get any of this yet, do you? Verse 10. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. And when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said, Do you understand what I have done to you? Do you understand? Crickets. Crickets. They just still don't get it. Verse 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. Nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Okay, if you do them. There was no doubt at this point who was the greatest in the room. They knew it's Jesus. Okay, when the disciples had earlier been arguing about who is the greatest, it was really who is the second greatest because they, they wanted to be great in the presence of Jesus who was the greatest. So, there's no doubt about who's the greatest in the room. It's Jesus, okay? Who had the words of eternal life? It was Jesus. Yet he says, if you want to be the greatest, you want to get that title, you serve. You serve. You, you want to be the greatest, you make yourself last. It, it's so contrary to the hearts of, of men. It's so contrary to the hearts of human beings, right? We, we don't naturally think that's how we become great. We don't naturally think, man, if I want to move up in this world, I'm going to serve people. Now, here's the beauty of it. Okay, do, do we all do a good job of being last? Okay, sometimes we do a great job of serving. And, and I've seen so many great things that our congregation has done, but we don't always do a great job of putting ourselves last. Okay, do we always put others before ourselves? No. And the disciples were with Jesus for three years, and they chose themselves first many, many times. That's why this story 
is not the end of the story. Okay? It's not the end of Jesus' story with his disciples. Jesus knew what he had to do. And that's what the Last Supper is, is all about, is preparing these disciples for what he had to do. He knew how many times those disciples had failed. Okay? He knew their sin. He knew he had to go and die. And guess what? He knows our failures too. Okay? He knows our sins, our weaknesses, our selfishness, our embarrassing past, our shame, our guilt. And he says, I don't want you to carry that. Let me carry it. And so just as Jesus carried his cross up to the place where he would be nailed to it and die, he carried our sin with him. And although we, we could never repay him for that, we can respond to it. And how do we respond to it? Jesus says, pick up the towel. Pick up the towel. And we serve. So how can you serve somebody today? How can you pick up the towel today? That's, that's the question that this text begs of us. Okay? How can you share some hope with someone that way today? Okay, one step is, is please share this video. And, and let's get more people sharing hope. Let's get more people picking up the towel. And as we look at our, our hope campaign for today, uh, it says, at a restaurant, leave a generous tip and write an encouraging note to the server. Okay, so it's, it's a little different. Not everybody's going to a restaurant right now, and that's okay. Um, the point is, serve someone who serves, or show appreciation for someone who is picking up the towel for you. So how can you show appreciation to somebody who's picking up the towel for you today, okay? Do something extra for someone who maybe isn't thanked a ton and pick up the towel for them. Pick up the towel for someone else. All right, so let's pray. God, we thank you for the way that you loved us. We know that just like your disciples, we don't always get it. And we're so thankful that you carried it all to the cross with you. So Lord, help us to respond by picking up the towel. We're thankful for that incredible gift of grace and, and one way that we can spread that gift is just through serving others. So empower us through your Holy Spirit to do just that. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So thanks for hanging out this morning, everybody. And we'll be live again Thursday morning, Friday morning, and of course, Sunday morning for our services. And so have a blessed day. Enjoy this incredible weather today that we have here in central Wisconsin, this incredible fall day. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. God's blessings.